Okay. Um, first off, my name is Rich. I'm the exercise specialist for Dr. Curry. I don't know if I know any of you. I think I've maybe met you once before. Um, so that's who I am. Um, this support group is called Home Exercises, Things to Do Safe and Effectively at Home if you don't have any equipment. So I'm assuming most people have a chair or a couch at home. So that's all I'm going to use for this class to show you, you know, how to get started at home if you don't want to go to a gym or, you know, can't afford a gym or too timid for a gym. This is where you can start out. You can do it while you're watching TV. You can do it before dinner, after dinner, two times a day, three times a day. And it's really not too, too hard on yourself. And you can make it harder depending on how many sets you do, how many reps you do, and the duration you do it for. So it's totally up to you. This is kind of like your own personal training. And uh, here's kind of like a guideline for you on what to do. So I'm just going to run through the exercises. Um, you know, take about a minute or so for each one. I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. And then after we're done, like I said, ask questions. I'll show you again if you weren't too sure about some things or if you want to talk about anything else that pertains to exercise. We'll do that then. Okay. So what I like to do when you start off an exercise of any sort is to warm up. So I have three warm ups here that kind of trigger most parts of your body. Um, the first one are just arm swings. You want to get the blood flowing in your upper body. Okay, so this is just an arm swing. Just a little twist at the torso, throw your arms around, some oxygen flowing, some blood flowing. So that's your arm swings. Okay, next thing are your toe touches. Okay. Feet just out, more, a little bit more than shoulder width. Same, just what it says, toe touches. Reach down, touch your toes. Okay, that's going to stretch out your lower back and your hamstrings some. Also keeping your upper body engaged as well. Okay, but about the warm up should take you a minute each exercise. You don't have to go too fast. You don't need to break a huge sweat. If you do break a little sweat, that's great. Get your heart rate up. That's the goal of a warm up. Okay, and the last one's just marching in place. And that's just to get your heart rate up. Okay, um, the best way to tell your heart rate you can feel your pulse on your wrist or on your neck, or you can kind of tell if you're starting to get a little bit out of breath, or it's hard to talk. That's the best way to, to know if you're working your body or not. Okay, so let's get started with exercises. First thing, couch push-ups. Okay, there's two different things you can do here. Um, if you use a couch or a chair, make sure it's a sturdy chair, because um, you, know, you don't want to start doing something and then have your chair fall out on you. So I definitely recommend a couch. I at least really can't carry a couch in by myself, so I gotta get stuck in the chair here. But um, just couch push-ups. Different from regular push-ups because you're not using all your body weight. Okay, so let's have a here. You just want to keep sure, make sure that your body is straight, just like this. Don't really want to come up like this too much. Just kind of, you want to learn how to do perfect form. So when you do push-ups on the floor, you do it the right way. You're not straining your back, all that kind of fun stuff. And if you keep everything in a straight line, you're working on your core as well, strengthening your lower back and your abdominals. So just a push-up is a push-up. Come down back up. Okay? You can do this on your couch, and you can also do it on the wall. So if you want a couch, I'm sure you have to have a wall on your couch. So there you go, same thing. Try to stay straight as best you can. Come down and back up. Okay? This one I think is a little bit more difficult because your hands are a little bit higher. So definitely try to do it on your couch if anything. Okay? Showed you what wall push-ups are. Dips are your second upper body exercise. Dips you can do it on the end of your chair here. Um, the shorter the distance between you and the floor, the easier your dips will be. So starting out, you want to probably start sitting on the cushion. What you do is put your hand grip, just a normal hand grip behind here, just holding on the edge. This is going to work on your triceps. Okay. Everyone likes to tighten up your muscles underneath here and your skin. You know, sometimes when you wave and then you get the other wave, that'll try to help tighten everything up. So what a dip looks like is you're sitting on the edge here. Kind of use your arms to lift yourself up a little bit, and you're going to get your butt away from the couch, and you're going to dip down so that your arms are bending at a 90 degree angle behind you here, and then come back up. Okay. That's a dip. Then when you get more advanced, do a little bit from a higher vantage point like this. Come on here, make sure it's sturdy again. You don't want the chair to topple forward on you. Come down and back up. This is a great exercise for your triceps. Okay. Those are dips. Next, just moving furniture. You know, who would have thought, but it's an upper body workout. It's actually a whole body workout because you're engaging your legs when you're moving the furniture. 
So what you do is you get to a couch, move it one side, wait, move it back to the other side. Or go to the other end of the couch, lift it up, move it again, just keep doing circles around your couch. That'll get your heart rate going pretty quickly. That'll be more of an upper body because most people tend to lift with your arms. With this, you can also, you know, sink down and use your hips to make it more of a full body exercise. So yeah, just moving furniture is a good exercise. Um, the next one, lift furniture and hold. Probably you're going to do this with a couch because chairs really aren't so heavy. I mean, that's really not helping me too much. But with the couch, get it by the arm. Um, you know, if you don't have any back issues or yeah, leg right. issues, You're yeah, I'm looking right at you. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not you know, you can, you can squat down and lift and hold. But, you know, if you can grab from up here, just lift it and hold it. Now, what this is doing is isometrically contracting the muscles in your arms, which means, like, if you were just to sit there and push your hands together, that's isometric contractions. So they're contracting, but you're not necessarily moving, extending. Uh, that'll help with toning. That's what all our machines are out there. They're based off of isometric contractions. So you're pushing against a resistance. So that's what that is. All right, next we're going to move on to abs. Okay. See on the right there? Everyone's favorite thing to do, crunches and all that fun stuff. Um, first thing I want to show you is a leg on the couch crunch. Um, this involves getting onto the floor. So you're going to lay on your back here. Put your feet up on your couch or your chair. So this way you don't have to like just hold them in midair on your own. This way your legs are up and this is going to focus working on your upper abdominals here. And just for a crunch, cross your arms, never put your hands behind your neck because you can risk hurting your neck and your spine. So keep your arms crossed here and you're just going to crunch up a little bit. You don't have to do a full sit up like this, just, just a crunch. Okay. On those, you probably want to do reps of like 20 to 30. Um, obviously, everyone has a different starting point. So do as many as you can until you can't stop, I mean, until you have to stop. And then write it down and just keep going and going and going. And then you'll notice, those are like the first things you can notice getting stronger is when you can do, you know, you go from 10 to 20 in like a week and a half. So those will get strength, strong pretty quickly. Uh, the next one is the feet under your couch or chair, sit up. This is like when you're in gym class and you have to do the presidential awards fitness, fitness yeah. stuff. You know, your partner's holding onto your feet. Well, you have your couch, so you don't need anyone to do these workouts. You have your couch. Your couch is your personal trainer. There you go. And you don't, you don't have to pay them. So you have to buy them, and they could be expensive, but you might as well get some more use. So you put your feet under. That's going to help keep you stabilized so you can do a full sit up. Remember, cross your arms again. All the way up. Okay. If you're starting out, you might want to grab one on your legs to help pull you up. Okay. Kind of like training wheels for sit-ups there. But um, really try to you go without. How Just do as many as you can. How's so, that going to impact what's going on with me? You might want to lay on a mat or something. And it's not going to hurt me to just sit up like that. That's not going to hurt my lower spine. May or may not. I would talk to your doctor first oh, okay. to make sure you get cleared, you know, the list of exercises to get cleared on. Okay. So you can just take that paper to your primary mm -hmm. care and say, hey, what do you think about these? Okay. And, uh, but if any of those exercises are just strengthening your lower back, if anything. So. And the holding underneath might actually help. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not really using all of your right. core, yeah. all of your lower back to help lift if you up. You do that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. The next one. Feet under again, it's called a Russian twist. This one probably is not going to be good for you because oh, okay. of, of twisting motions. So, feet underneath. The Russian twist is, is just, you want to sit up here, you're not going to be laying flat, you're not going to be totally up because it's really easy if you sit straight up. So first practice just laying back like this, and then what you're going to do, put your hands together, and you're going to twist. Okay? You hear my back cracking a little bit, but... This is going to work on your obliques, which are your love handles. This is what it looks like. The chair is holding your feet, so this way you don't topple over. This same exercise you could do without the chair. It's a lot harder to do it when your feet aren't being held. You see, like, I want to fall back more because of my feet are not held. Usually, when you get really good at these, keep your feet up. 
and then you go like this. So that's just down the road, something to, to work towards. But yeah, use the chair or your couch to help you do the sort of thing. Okay, the next one, the dead bug on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Reading ahead of like this or like <laughs> not an actual dead bug on a couch. You're gonna you're gonna act like you're a dead bug on a couch. If I had a longer couch, it's easier to show, but the kind of thing is it's probably gonna laugh, but you wanna do kind of like what I was doing with the Russian twist with my feet up, kind of balance. So you're just gonna be holding yourself up like this. And all this is doing is just triggering your core. So you wanna act like a dead bug and lay back. It's probably easier if you go this way on a normal size couch, not mine. A mini couch, but yeah, that's called the dead bug. So you're just holding everything up and just balancing on your bottom. Okay, and you hold your hands up. You can practice first by you know kind of holding on a little bit because you still feel it, but then you keep your hands up and you're really gonna feel it. And that's called the dead bug. We usually do it on that Bozu ball over there, that flat blue thing that's the mound. So just kind of incorporating things from other machines into your couch. And then you can also do the Russian twist, obviously. So you get in the dead bug position, and then you start twisting. So you're going to be really working your core on that one. And this way, if you topple over, topple over on the couch, not on the floor, hit your head or anything. So like I said, it's safe and effective exercises at home. Okay, and last, we have a list of leg exercises. Everyone's favorite are squats. I'm not a big squat fan, but if I could do them in my house, why not? Um, go wherever you can grab a good piece of your furniture. Probably something higher than you know the arm or the bottom here. Um, I'm going to kind of show you first what a squat is. You want to keep your legs shoulder width apart. Okay, and this is without the chair. But when you squat down, I'll show you from the side view. You want to get to like a 90 degree angle bend with your leg to your thigh. So it's going to look like this. Okay. You see how there's a 90 degree angle, well, somewhat of a 90 degree angle here? That's a squat. So you're going to incorporate that holding on, which won't use your, all of your body weight on your legs and your back. And to remember to look up. Looking up keeps your spine a straight line. Okay? So just grab on, feet a little bit more than shoulder width apart, or a little more shoulder width apart. You squat down looking up, you come back up with a heavier couch. This won't happen. Up, squat down, and that's your best bang for your buck leg, leg exercise. It works everything. You're also going to work your core as well with squats. So, and then once you get more advanced, you can, you know, do some weight, like, some type of weights. Hold on, to using some weights, and then you can use the couch with one hand. So this way you have more resistance. So, some things to think about when you go further down the road with at home exercising. Next is a wall sit. Like I said, you probably have a wall at your house. This is like being stuck in the squat position. So you go to a wall, feet shoulder width apart. Obviously, you're going to lean on the wall. You want your legs up a little bit. And you're just going to squat down until you form that 90 degrees again. Okay. Starting out, hold on to your legs because you'll feel the burn right away. But it's definitely something to work towards. This is your isometric contractions again except with your legs. Then once you get good at it, hands up. Then you're not really, you know, holding on and really bracing for it. So you can see I'm shaking a little bit here. So hands up, and that'll help you get off, just push off the wall, okay? Probably starting out, you'll just slide right now and fall on your butt. <laughs> but also, I mean, you can also start high. Then, you know, slowly work your way down, make little marks on the wall. Obviously, you don't want to use like permanent marker, but something to know where your butt is to achieve where you need to go for 90 degrees and where you're at. So this way, you know you're building yourself up. Little things. Um, lunges, another favorite. Okay, here's a normal lunge, extended step. Knees don't go past the toes. Come down and up. Another really great leg exercise when you're with your couch. Hold on, this is a little low, so you probably want to do it back here, but I can show you your extended leg, knee not past the toes, come down, knee doesn't have to touch the ground, I would rather it not, and then if you can't lift up with your legs, use your arms, 
to push up. This way you're still getting really good benefit with your legs. You can use the same arm to switch. I would switch over here just because I'm moving around more rather than doing the easy thing and just stay in the same spot. So same leg, extended, down, and up. So those are your lunges. Okay. Then after this, I'll kind of tell you how many reps is good, how many reps you should do, that kind of stuff. So we're just gonna go through this. Next, kickbacks and leg swings, kind of similar things, just different motion. These are good, loosen up the hips. Um, a kickback, I don't the ball, but hold onto your chair or your, your couch, and you're just gonna kick your leg back. Bring it back up here, kick it back. You'll be surprised that when you do these, It'll burn. It doesn't look like you're doing much, but like keeping your leg up here, straight back here, you're really working on your core, as well as the little muscles in your hips. Okay. Then switch, leg up, and out. Okay. The next thing are leg swings. These are going to work on your abduction and adduction with your, your hip. So what's what's going to look like? Obviously, you want to stand more here, but I'm going to show you. Use your right leg in front first, and then bring it inside, and then swing out. Okay? And you'll feel it when you're up here. You'll feel it all down here. Your, your leg. Um, what's that nerve that people do? Sciatic? Sciatic. Yeah, you'll feel it there. My parents always like, oh, my sciatic. Uh, you know, that'll work. Same thing on the other side. Leg swings. These are great. Work on the smaller muscles in your hips. You need a strong frame because that's what's going to hold you up later, you know, as we get older. Alright, last calf raises. Okay. Starting out, you want to do two feet. What a calf raise is, just on your tiptoes, hold it for a two count, back down all the way. Up. Hold it for a two count, and back down. With two feet, I like to go quicker than a two count. So for an example, it would be like this. So that's just as fast as you can go. Try to burn out your calves. When you do one leg, just lift up the other leg to tuck it behind, hold it for a two count. I don't like going fast on one leg because it's more unstable. You can risk of rolling your ankle and don't need that. So yeah, hold it, switch, switch legs, hold it, switch. All right, and that is your everyday at-home exercise. It doesn't cost you anything. So.